Hello guys, welcome wonderful people of the Inspired A New Clan. So glad to have you here this blessed morning. Um, it's so important what God has to say today to us. Um, the Lord woke me up and would not give me any rest until I decided to get with the Holy Spirit, get moving and coming present the message that God has for us today. Of course, as you know, um, the mandate is to call us back to repentance, to call us back to the family, to the altar of prayer. And last week I did briefly tap into the importance of the altar, the altar of prayer. The altar is a very significant symbol in the Bible and um, it is a place where God's people would at different times meet with the Lord to bring their sin offerings, their sacrifices and um, come in repentance to God. So an altar is a sacred place. It's a sanctified place. And there are evil altars as well as there are holy altars, godly altars. And just as at the good altar, at the holy altar, sacrifices are being made in petition to God for His mercy, for His forgiveness. Similarly, sacrifices are being made at evil altars to some deity other than Almighty God. And exchanges are taking place at each altar. We exchange our burdens, we exchange our sins for God's mercy, for God's goodness, for God's favor, for Him turning away evil things that were intended for us when we re genuinely repent and turning his mercy and his favor on us. In like manner, when you have an evil altar, such as a place where witchcraft practices are done, a God is venerated. It's just not the holy God of heaven. And exchanges are taking place. Covenant is being made. Blood covenants are being made. We go and we present ourselves before God and Jesus' blood, which has already been shed for us, through which we are covenanted to God, becomes available for our forgiveness and our washing and cleansing. In like manner, at evil altars, blood covenant is taking place. People are cutting themselves, mingling their blood with the blood of animals, that have been sacrificed to the enemy, to Satan. And so they are making a pact and an agreement with Satan to receive whatever it is, powers that he has for them, to get them to function in his kingdom and to bring about his devices. So we need to understand that whatever altar you build and whatever you sacrifice there, whatever you bring or give, exchange is taking place and you are meeting with some deity some god it might not be almighty god but you're still meeting with a deity because that's the essence of an altar so we talked about that last week and we as believers and those who want to come to faith in christ make sure that the altar you build your building is a holy altar unto God Almighty, that your heart is pure, that you are making confessions of your sins there, that you are praying for forgiveness of sins and for others, and that you are not engaging in any type of witchcraft, necromancy, no type of secret order soul ties are going on there. The only person that you should be 
venerating at your altar of prayer in your home is Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Having said all that, the topic today that the Lord gave me woke me up with a solemn warning. It was so real. A solemn warning to us in America today. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian today or not. This warning is for everybody. And the Lord is saying, if not now, when? If we are not going to pray now and seek his face, when are we going to do it? Because in a little while from now, it will be too late. This is what the Lord showed me. Demon spirits are crying out for blood in the streets. Demon spirits. There are certain demonic entities and certain realms of demons that feed off the shedding of blood. And at certain times, in certain societies, in places of the world, you can see the pattern. When these demons are hungry for blood, and they're never satisfied, they will start something, start a war, start a genocide, start a mayhem in the street, and innocent lives are lost. But these demons are not satisfied until they get that blood. And many of us are walking around in a cloud, especially Christians. We are so unaware of the spiritual realm around us and what is taking place there. We are just walking, tiptoeing through the tulips as if, you know, there's nothing going on. The scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And God is warning us not to be ignorant anymore, but to grasp onto this knowledge that he's providing through his servants all around the world, all around here in the United States, warning us, telling us it's time to wake up because there's something coming down the pike. It is so evil, so wicked, so demonic, so determined to take out as many lives as possible. And you've got to be ready so you don't get caught up in it. This is what the word of the Lord says today. How will it unfold? The demon spirits are crying out for blood. How will this unfold? We have seen some mirages, some premonitions of it happening already in the society. Mayhem in the street. The scripture says in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. We have seen it in the streets these past few weeks. People going into certain cities, starting a big riot, a big mayhem. Innocent people are passing by, they are captured, they are beaten up. They are maimed, they are attacked. And in some of these cities, the city leaders are in cahoots with these crowds running around without restraint, uncontrollably, doing whatever they please to people's properties. You see people going, there was a new house being built in one of these cities, and the crowd, the mob, went and started tearing down the person's home that they are building setting fire to it, turning over, turning cars. So mayhem and anarchy will be the harbingers of this demonic force and plan that's coming down the road. So when this mayhem starts, and in some of these cities, as I said, city leaders are in cahoots with it, so they tell the police, the security forces, Stand down. Don't touch those people. Don't intervene. So you and I as innocent citizens could be going about our daily lives, trying to get to work, getting your children to school. And here comes this big mayhem in the street. You can't get by or you will be crushed 
or you will be beaten up or your children will be dragged from you and beaten right before your face and the police have to stand there with their hands at their side saying and doing nothing because city leaders say this is what must happen have you ever seen anything more demonic than that and yet God is giving us an opportunity today maybe the last chance to get it right to get together with other believers other people who know how to pray and want to pray wherever you are in the world doesn't matter what country what city it is coming to you before long because this is not controlled by man it's demonic you may say, oh, in this city today, I'm in the beautiful city of Paris, or I'm in Switzerland, I am in Scandinavia, they are so peaceful, they are so calm, those people never get involved in this kind of mayhem, and believe me, it is coming to you, coming to a city near you pretty soon, because demons are no respecters of persons or countries or nations or you know, whether you're calm and sedate and you don't get involved in war and what have you. The demons are not impressed by that. They don't care. They want to cause chaos. They want blood at all costs. It doesn't matter where. I remember some time ago, the Lord allowed me. I went on a mission trip to a foreign country in Africa. And they asked me to bring the message to preach. And when I brought the message, I had to get up the day before. I spent most of the time preparing and seeking the Lord. What do you want me to say to these people? I might not see them again, but I, I felt in my spirit that what he wanted to say was very significant. And I needed to get it right. Five o'clock in the morning while others were sleeping, I got up and I was seeking God. Seeking God for what do you want to say to these people? It is going to be life changing. It will have eternal significance. And the word that came to me after praying and seeking and then listening to the voice of the Lord. The word, the topic, the title of the message was. It is time for you, people of this city, this country, to seek God's face and pray. And in the message while I was speaking, I remember hearing myself saying, I didn't plan to say that. Because after a while, when the Holy Spirit took over, I didn't need to use my notes anymore. He was just speaking through me. And I heard myself saying, city of so-and-so, country so-and-so, this peace that you are experiencing at this time, you will not always have. I was speaking prophetically and I didn't even know. This peace you see today, you will not always enjoy. That was 14 years ago. No, not 14. 2005. Yes, 14 years ago. Wow, it didn't seem that long. And today, starting about three years or more ago, this country now has civil war where one group, one leader does not want to give up power and wants one certain language speaking group to be above the other and to wipe out the other groups. I get pictures of young men, teenagers, teenage boys, adolescents lying in the street, strings of them that have been slaughtered. Babies, I saw a picture of a, a baby lying next to a mother, a toddler lying next to a mother. The mother looks like she, if she's 30, she's old. She doesn't look like she's 30, younger than 30. And the baby lying next to her, you could tell that she was trying to escape when they came to burn her village down. And she fell prey under the fire. And the, the baby and the mother looked like when you would see a roasted chicken with a crispy burn on the outside. 
I said that, 2005. This peace you have today, you will not always have. So turn to God, seek his face and pray. And so the Lord showed me a panoramic view of what is coming down the pipe here, pike here in America. If you don't want to pray, if you don't think it is important to pray and see God's face, then be prepared for the consequences. If you don't want to repent and turn from your wicked ways and see his face and appeal to the mercy and justice of God, that peradventure you will turn this thing around. Because when all is said and done and the dust settles, it won't be pretty. There will be bodies lying in the street, blood running in the street. If you're not careful, they may have to call in martial law, depending on who rises to the top and will be in charge of this country anymore. This country will not look like anything that you have known it as. Because this is all taking place under demonic influence and direction. You won't be able to go to work. So without work, there is no pay. There is no income. Even if you get to go to the stores, the stores will be empty. Because they have been thrashed. And the items have been taken out. What will you do then? You will say, you will be lamenting and mourning and say, How did we come to this? Why was this allowed to happen? Let me tell you, as we have been saying the past three months, this will have been the maturity, the harvest that is reaped from the years spent when we have neglected to teach the word of God to our children, when we have presented it as if it was an option, when we gave them every other gift their heart desires, every game, every this, every that, that money can buy, except Jesus Christ and his holy word that he said in Deuteronomy, these words that I give you, that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. How have we done with that? And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. This is how important the word of God should be to us. It should be more than talking about what we see on video on Facebook and all that's going on in the gaming and what have you this word of God should take precedence over those things but we don't care about that we don't talk about God or all my friends my family members no put that to the side you should bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes you shall write them on the doorsteps of your house and on your gates. It's so prominent the word of God should be in our lives, in our nations, in our cities. But instead, we have chosen to promote everything else except the precious word of God. So you have dead bodies lying in the street signs of destruction and mayhem all over and you're weeping and wailing and wondering how did we come to this why is God allowing this to happen I can just hear the question now well I have an answer for that let's look and this is a scripture the Lord gave me this morning when I woke up and was talking to him about the vision he gave me and showed me Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 20. Let's start at verse 20. Let's see what the Lord says about the rebellious and obstinate house. 
Declare this in the house of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah, saying, Hear this now, O foolish people, without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears and hear not. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as is bound of the sea, that's who God is, by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass beyond it. In other words, God is saying, I am the one who placed the sand by the seashore and said the waters will come this far and no further. Do you not fear me? And though its waves toss to and fro and they cannot prevail, though they roar, yet they cannot pass over the sand. But this people has a defiant and rebellious heart. Have we been defiant towards God and his words? They have revolted and departed. They do not say in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, who gives rain, both the former rain and the latter rain in its season. He reserves for us the appointed weeks of the harvest. This is what we should be saying about God, giving him glory and praise for his greatness, for his wonders, for his might, for his help, for his protection, for his goodness towards us. The scripture says, verse 22, your iniquities have turned these things away from you and your sins have withheld good things so don't blame God in that day or anybody else. Your sins, it says, our sins will have withheld good things from us. For among my people are found wicked men. That means men and women too. They lie in wait as one who sets snares. They set up a trap. They catch men as a cage is full of birds so their houses are full of deceit therefore they have become great and grown rich they have grown fat they are sleek yes they surpass the deeds of the wicked they do not plead the cause the cause of the fatherless Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy they do not defend. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Hmm. Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? An astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land, O oh God. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests rule by their own power. Hmm. And my people love to have it so. Yeah? By what will you do? But what will you do in the end? The Lord is asking. We have been deceived into thinking There's only a love side of God and there's no judgment side. It's right there. Clear and plain for all to see who want to see and know the truth. And it's already happening. I saw just a few weeks ago a preacher went to a community college, which is a public institution. The public, anyone from the public has the right to go there because we all pay taxes. And this preacher was standing in, in one side of the parking lot though. And he had his sign up and he was just inviting people to consider their ways and turn to God um, because judgment is coming. Jesus is coming back. He loves us so much. He doesn't want anyone to perish. Just peacefully 
uttering what God told him to speak as a clarion, as an oracle of God. And out came these young ladies, adolescents, and they were so incensed at this preacher who dared to say if they didn't repent, they were going to go to hell. And this particular one young lady, I pity her. She was in this preacher's face and the language, the expressions that she was using. And she kept repeating this one four little word over and over and over again in his face. And she was ex exposing how she enjoys her sin. And that there's nothing the preacher could do about it. She just kept repeating these. Gutter-like language. Egregious words that were being spoken. And I just looked and I said, my God. Were it not for the mercy of God. If it was in the olden days, in the Old Testament days. Just like when some children came out and mocked Elisha, the prophet, and said, go up, you bald-headed man. Instantly, instantly, they all fell dead. But because Jesus came, and with Jesus comes mercy and grace, we take it for granted and we think nothing of cursing one another, abusing, lying, stealing, cheating, killing, without repudiation. Have no respect for the man or woman of God, or the servant of God. And God is saying in this word, should I not punish this nation? You wonder, who taught that young lady? Who were her mentors or teachers? Not castigating her parents, they may have done the best they could in teaching her the right, and then when she got off to college, she felt she fell under the tutelage of those ungodly professors who see no sacredness in anything at all. We don't know, but all I know is it was horrible to watch. Then three others joined her and they were telling the preacher that he should leave the campus as if they owned it. That he should leave. Don't remind me of my sin. Don't tell me about righteousness and goodness and turning away from them. In, in other words, they're saying, let me die in my sin. It's my choice. But what they don't realize is when they die and go to that place, that's not the end of it. And they're going to long to come back to a place of consciousness, to a place where that same preacher would have been preaching, begging, they would be begging, let me go back, let me go back to get it right this time, but there's no coming back. That is not in the plan of God. Now is the time. And so, this is a picture that the Lord showed me. And he said, get up, go share it with the people. This will stand as an evidence against America, whichever city you are in, whichever country you are in, if you are seeing this, repent before God. Turn away from your sins, from your wicked. Seek him and hide yourself now under the shadow of his wings. That is your hope. There is no hope outside of him. That is your hope before the calamity comes. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, Lord, hide us 
in the hollow palm of your hand until this great calamity be overpassed. God has a way of protecting his people even in the midst of the storm. But you have, you would have had to have had a relationship with him before the storm comes and be hiding in him. He is merciful even at the last minute. If you are conscious, you can call out with sincerity to God to save you. But how much better if you had been hiding and abiding in him all along. So, from this altar today, we have presented the truth of God's word. We have issued the warning. It's not a matter of if it is coming. The only question is when. You can see it. You see the signs. You see it on the news. You might think you're in a secure city, a peaceful city, and it's not going to happen here. Think again. Think again. For the heart of man is desperately wicked, and that no one, above all else, no one can know the depths of the wickedness of man's heart. And in a flash, in a moment, a peaceful town or city can turn like this because there are many people, they don't know the word of God. They don't know wrong from right. As we said, they didn't have fathers or parents who taught them the truth of God's word, guided and molded them. So they are just out there like cannon fodder, being filled with the negativity and the hatred and the bitterness and the wrath of the enemy who is longing for blood to drink. They have no purpose in life. They have not found their purpose because your purpose is found in Jesus Christ. So they're just walking like zombies waiting to be filled by any force. And the devil has his agents out there influencing. I'm going to tell you why your peaceful, beautiful, calm city and home can change in a moment into a killing field, in a minefield, in a place of torment. Second Timothy three verse three. Well, let's begin at verse one. But know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men will be lovers of pleasure, of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. Hello? brutal despisers of them who are good have you ever seen a time like this when it is not okay to be good if you are a good person if you are a righteous person if you walk uprightly before God and observe the laws and practice a good moral living in the eyes of the world and these agents of the enemy, you are not good. You are the one to be targeted. You are the one to be killed. You are the one to be harassed and have your life turned upside down. Because what? Satan dwells in the hearts of these people who have refused to accept God as Savior and Lord. You'll be surprised to see how you sedate professor can turn into a monster in the twinkling of an eye. And there are those who appear peaceful and calm on the outside, but underneath they are the ones stoking the fire, fanning the flame, inciting the mayhem and the riot. 
wicked men and women that the scripture talks about. The Bible says there is no one good but God Almighty. And when you surrender yourself to him, he changes you from inside out. Otherwise, outside of that, there is no one good. And Second Timothy says, they have a form of godliness, just a cloak that they wear outside, but they deny the power of God thereof. He said, from such turn away. Turn away. Psalm 1, again, blessed is the man, the child, the boy, the girl, the woman, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Those are the mockers who mock God and his holiness and God's people. From search, turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households, made captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Always learning. You go to these colleges where you and I are paying millions of dollars every year for. And what do they learn there? How to rebel against God. How to be defiant and disobedient and wicked. Always learning but never coming to the simple truth. Simple truth of God's word that can set them free. Always learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janes and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. But the Bible says, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as Janes and Jambres were also. This is the word of God today. You have a choice to accept or not to accept. To turn or not to turn. I have obeyed God and done and shared what he said to share. Your children, the future of your children, the future generations, you who have children, if for no other reason, you, you might think, oh, I'm asked to be dead and gone and that's it. You, If you have children, they'll be left back here. If you have not invested in them in teaching them the word of God, how to walk humbly with God and holily, what legacy have you left them? You may leave them a million dollars, a billion dollars, some businesses, some houses, well, what have you really left them? If they don't know how to walk away from the ungodliness that is around them, how to resist the devil that so will flee from them, how to pray divine protection over themselves. In this past two weeks, there has been a rush of young girls, adolescents, just starting university who have been murdered by boyfriends college mates young men we're not talking old decrepit people who you know lost their temper and killed somebody we're talking young men and women adolescents who take their girlfriends or acquaintances and just murder them outright. Some burn them after they murder them and bury them in their backyard or wherever, or throw them into a river. And we want to think that we are so civilized. But you're civilized, your civility will not stand against these demons that are released out there 
no match for them. They are not impressed by civility. They are warring spirits. They are spirits that want to devour and tear societies apart and drink innocent blood. And the only weapon that can stand against them and be effective is the word of God and the power of Almighty God and the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you, you have the authority. If you will only turn to God and seek his face and pray and fast, you have the authority to change situations in your city, on your street, on your block, in your nation. But without coming to the altar of God to receive the power, to receive forgiveness, to receive insight and wisdom, to see way ahead of time, the mayhem that is coming and to warn others and hide yourself before it arrives. If you don't come to the altar of God and exchange your weaknesses for his strength, your sins for his grace and mercy and his power, you will not be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. May God bless us today. May he give us Attentive ears, receptive hearts, and the will to act on what we have heard. Time out for hearing the word and not doing anything about it. That's why we're in the state we are. Because nothing stays the same. Man's heart is not static. The thoughts that come into our hearts. If we hear truth and we fail to accept it and to act upon it and to repent and to change, our hearts will become harder. And when they get harder, they are a more fitting tool for the enemy to use. And so as we bring this to a close, I'm reminded of a song. You no, know, I like singing and I like songs that speak about God is truth, where we are now, the future, the present, the past. And I give credit to the people. I don't think they even know that group. I don't think they knew the significance of the song that they were inspired to sing. But this was by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. God bless them. I don't know where those gentlemen are today. They might be much older now. But the song was, Wake up, all you people. No more sleeping in bed. Bloodthirsty demons are crying out for the blood of your children in the streets. Harold Melvin and the Blue Note says, Wake up, all you people. No more sleeping in bed. Wake up, all you teachers. He said, Teach the children anew. Maybe they will listen to you. They are the ones of the future. They have the world in their hands. Teach them the truth. They said, wake up, all you preachers. Stop preaching your own feeling. Preach the truth, they said in the song. Wake up, politicians. No more lying to the people. He said, wake up, you dope pushers. Stop pushing the dope. Wake up, you builders. Begin to build on your land. And the refrain from the song said, the world won't get any better unless we change. They said, we cannot do it by ourselves. We need each other. To turn the ship around. To turn America back to God. And righteousness. And holiness. And love. And parents in the homes. And fathers. Leading and guiding their children. The world won't get no better. Until we change. Wake up all you people. No more sleeping in bed. 
How long are we going to sleep? Christians, how long are we going to sleep? How long are we going to eat? We're always eating. When the pastor calls for prayer and fasting, maybe two show up or three, the same faithful few. And he says, oh, there's going to be a feast after church. Everybody, nobody is sick that day. Everybody comes to church. But pretty soon, there will be no food to eat except the manna from above. And if you were not exercising fasting, that will be a hard time to try to fast. Go back over in your spare time. Read Jeremiah 6, 22 and on. And 1 Timothy 3 and 3. The reality, I hope, will dawn on you that we are not far from these things that the Bible has told us about. Gather around me, children, on this merry-go-round, and follow along with me to the place where we meet to pray. Let us pray as we close out this session. Father, in the name of Jesus, thine only begotten Son, who taught us to pray in your word, saying, Abba, Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. We thank you for forgiving us of our trespasses. But lead us not into temptation, my God. But deliver us from all evil, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we pray, I have done what you have asked me to do in sincerity and in truth, to share this solemn word with the people all around the globe wherever this is heard, calling them to attention to repentance and to prayer and to seek your face before the great calamity. O oh God, through your Holy Spirit, I pray you will draw those who will be drawn. Make their hearts pliable in your hand and receptive to your word. That when we shall have repented, O oh God, you will be pleased with us and you will turn the hand of your wrath to that of mercy, that ourselves and the generation to come may be spared. We will begin to teach your holy words to our children and build a new generation who fears God and despise evil. Let it be, Father, as your words have said. May we see the manifestation of these prayers as we have asked in faith believing, thanking you for the outcome and leaving it in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now please remember to subscribe, comment, share this good news with your friends. Get together in your circle of friends. Pray. Pray in your neighborhood. And please be so kind as to, in, your comment sec in the comment section, write a testimony of how this has impacted you and what you have done differently since we started talking about the altar of prayer and if you have had any answers to prayer. May God bless you as you continue to be inspired anew by your God. Blessings. Peace be unto you from this day forward.